Ever wondered what it would look like if all the characters of Mortal Kombat could live forever and compete with each other throughout eternity, and every character had a unique skill set that made them a fierce competitor in each realm? Then worry not, because we've got a comic book franchise that will blow you away. Today we will discuss the popular Highlander series and its iconic villains. However, instead of talking about each of them, we'll deeply dive into a particular underrated villain with an exciting storyline. The character we will discuss today is infamously called Toshiro Nakiata. However, his real name is different altogether. But before that, I will give you a brief glimpse into the world of Highlander. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Incredible World of Highlander Highlander revolves around immortal fighters competing with each other till death. I know immortality and death don't go well with each other. To kill an immortal, one needs to decapitate the head. Nothing else technically works. Now, coming back to the comic book, we follow the story of Connor McCloud who is an immortal swordsman. In his quest for the game, he meets various adversaries and villains, including the infamous Japanese swordsman Toshiro Nakiata. Inspired by the way of the samurai, at first glance, Toshiro looks like a man of discipline who honors integrity and courage, but doesn't let appearances deceive you because the story is way more profound than that. Now, Toshiro is not like every other villain who just wants to wreak havoc and hurt the innocent without any reason. Instead, the Japanese immortal has an ultimate purpose of acquiring a thing of great value value to him, and he will go to any lengths to obtain it. The popularity of Highlander has led to a live-action movie and a six-season TV show. Therefore, a virtuous villain like Toshiro Nakiata has been portrayed in several ways. But today, we will explore the character through its original identity, the comic books. Toshiro plays an integral part in the storyline of Highlander, Way of the Sword. But before exploring that, let's find out how Toshiro rose to power and became an incredible adversary. The Different Breed of Evil Rise of Toshiro Nakiata The story of Toshiro Nakiata begins in prehistoric Japan. The Japanese mob boss was initially a shy kid, deemed unworthy by his father. Toshiro was the sole survivor when his village was massacred. He was later raised by a blacksmith who created a special katana that plays an integral part in the series. The blacksmith later named the boy Ren and raised him well while providing him with all the necessities of life. Later, he created a katana named Masumune, which is notable for various reasons. Firstly and most importantly, it gives its wielder an edge over its opponents. The first person ever to wield this sword was a legendary immortal named Ramirez. Ramirez also trained the main character, Connor McCloud, in his quest for greatness. So now you may wonder how Toshiro Nakiata ties up to this story. In the Highlander Way of the Sword issue 1 through 4, we find out that the Masamune was initially meant for the young boy named Ren. Sadly, the boy didn't possess the required skills to wield the legendary sword, and it was later passed on to Ramirez, who eventually married the daughter of the blacksmith. Following that sequence, it is later revealed that Ren dies under mysterious circumstances, and is later resurrected as an immortal, changing his entire life trajectory. Since then, the boy gave himself the name Toshiro Nakiata, and made his ultimate purpose to acquire the legendary katana meant for him. Returning to the present storyline from 1950, Toshiro Nakiata is a feared mob boss with a massive empire. He finds out about the location of the legendary katana sword and acquires it. The sword was held at an auction in Paris organized by Antonio Dorenzo after paying a hefty prize for the sword. Toshiro acquires it but doesn't keep his promise of paying the money. Instead, he kills the organizer, believing that the Masumune always belonged to him. The Japanese mob boss isn't the only immortal after the sword, as the protagonist, Connor McCloud, is also striving for it. After discovering the sword's new owner, Connor gets some information on his adversary. He soon discovers that Toshiro is highly arrogant and doesn't respect the sword. Instead, he uses it as a status symbol, believing it's his birthright. While our protagonist is busy spying, Toshiro gets the jump on him and decides to confront him. An exhilarating battle soon follows, and both immortals try to get the better of each other while sharing some profound words about legacy and birthright. Toshiro gets enraged and decides to stab Connor's shoulder with the Masumune. Connor thinks fast and cuts off Toshiro's arm while throwing him in the bushes. Connor quickly leaves the location with the sword, while Toshiro vows to get his revenge and the sword. Issue 3 ends when the Japanese immortal decides to exact revenge on Connor McCloud. Issue 4 starts with a backstory explaining Toshiro's story as a child. We witness the resentment and hopelessness that the Japanese immortal experienced when the sword was passed on to Ramirez instead of him. On the other hand, Connor is having a blissful time with his new girlfriend, Elizabeth Dorenzo. Just a quick note, Elizabeth is the brother of the auction organizer, Antonio Dorenzo, who Toshiro Nakiata killed. This is essential information that will be of great value. So, 
Coming back to the story, Connor and Elizabeth are taking a stroll in the park. A casual stroll suddenly turns into ultimate immortal warfare when Toshiro makes his entry. The Japanese mob boss tracked down Connor in no time, and Brownie points for dedication to him. This time, Toshiro hasn't come unprepared and has an extra weapon. He has replaced his other hand with a sword, and he uses the element of surprise to his advantage. Toshiro immediately stabs Connor in his gut, while Elizabeth stands there in complete shock as the two immortals are fighting it out. We can see that Toshiro is getting the upper hand. He also gets the opportunity to finish the job. But guess what? Elizabeth stabs Toshiro on the shoulder, rendering him immovable for a moment. She hopes to take revenge for her brother's killing. The immortal soon gathers himself and stabs Elizabeth in return, killing her on the spot. He also points out to Connor that humans aren't allowed to get involved in the game. In a fit of rage and fury, Connor breaks Toshiro's right hand and kills him with his sword. He then completes the job by decapitating the Japanese mob boss and subsequently takes his quickening. What is quickening, you ask? Okay, when an immortal defeats another immortal, he gains certain powers and intellect, which is called the quickening. After acquiring the quickening, Connor mourns Elizabeth's death and gets on with the game of being the last immortal alive and defeating everyone else. On the other hand, Toshiro's ending is rather anticlimactic. With such a rich backstory and a great purpose, viewers would have loved a more engaging storyline about him. This begs the question. Is Toshiro Nakayata dead? Simple answer, yes, he is dead. However, there's a strong possibility that this won't be his final appearance in the Highlander comic book series. The comic book uses an interesting structure of parallel storylines. The story is not linear, and we can see many flashbacks so that the readers may get the required information. The character of Toshiro is an underrated villain who should be explored more. Maybe the writers will try to incorporate a couple of flashbacks featuring him and how he rose to incredible power. We are also unaware of the rest of his childhood and how he trained immediately after becoming an immortal, with so many storylines to explore. It will be interesting to see if the infamous Toshiro Nakayata returns in the Highlander series. Toshiro isn't the only villain in the comic book series. Connor has defeated many adversaries during his lifetime, and there's still a long way to go before he becomes the ultimate Highlander. While we are on the subject of other villains, let's find out how Toshiro Nakayata compares to the other villains of Highlander, and he is the strongest one out there. How does Toshiro Nakayata compare with other villains? In the eternal struggle for the game, many adversaries cross paths with the protagonist. Some are a decent match, while others are compelling and have defeated the protagonist many times. Although there is no set way to determine the power levels of each villain, it is strongly believed that the Kurgan is the ultimate villain of the franchise. Kurgan is basically like Thanos of the Highlander. However, he doesn't have an ultimate purpose and just loves chaos and killing people in his quest for the game. A good reason why Kurgan is the strongest he can be because of his age. He has been fighting since the prehistoric ages and has appeared in almost every major battle throughout history. The Kurgan is also the main villain in the live-action Highlander movie, as well as the TV series. Originating from Eastern Russia, Kurgan lived in a nomadic world and first died at the hands of some bandits before being resurrected as an immortal with incredible strength and experience. It is safe to assume that the Kurgan is stronger than Toshiro Nakayata. However, Toshiro has a great storyline and a sense of purpose. This makes him a much more rounded character. Another Another ruthless adversary is Cronus, who has been around since ancient times. The leader of the Four Horsemen, Cronus, is manipulative and cunning in his ways, just like Toshiro. The one villain that Toshiro relates with the most is Marcus Octavius, because both these characters have a sense of purpose. Like Toshiro, Marcus strives for a mystical power called the titular source. The power holds the key to immortality, and Marcus will go to great lengths to acquire this mysterious power. With several strong villains in the series, we still believe that Toshiro Nakayata is the most under let me tell you why. Firstly, Toshira had the ultimate rags to redemption story. After being denied by his father for being weak and unworthy, Toshiro turns the tide around and becomes a strong immortal. Secondly, Toshiro also does exceptionally well in the mob business and starts to climb up the ladder while defeating many important mob families. However, the most important reason he is underrated is the length of his appearance in the comics. He is only seen in the comics for four to five issues, and that's all. With such a deep storyline and strong ties, Toshiro's story should have been explored further. The Japanese immortal had the potential to be a strong adversary, but instead is celebrated as an underrated character. Marvelous verdict. Connor McCloud and his quest for the eternal game will keep going on. The same can't be said for Toshiro Nakayata, another name on the list of many villains in the Highlander. But just like a protagonist, each villain also has a backstory and a strong reason why they are who they are. Toshiro had a troubled childhood and was ignored by his own father. This gave rise to a sense of resentment, which made him ruthless. From the very beginning, Toshiro or Rin thought that the Masamune was his birthright and did everything in his power to acquire it. Greed and overconfidence got the better of him. 
instead of learning how to use the sword, he swung it like any other blade, resulting in his untimely demise. Toshiro Nakayata's storyline teaches us an important lesson. Things won't get better even after you acquire the things you want for an eternity. If you found the video informative and learned anything from Toshiro Nakayata's story, then give us a like. Do let us know in the comments below if you think Toshiro is truly an underrated villain. Also, check out various videos on comic book breakdowns and detailed analysis of many other marvelous supervillains. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.